Once again, welcome to ITSC 1345, Chapter 10, the final chapter. Uh, there are three major items that Chapter 10 talks about, and these have to do with items that are really not within the PL SQL structure that we had been talking about. Uh, understanding that sometimes you have a big chunk of data. And any large data requires significant management when you sign the database because they take, it consumes resources and it's very difficult to manage. So Oracle has come up with this process where what you do is you actually save the address of the large chunk of data within as a pointer to the directory file structure where that large file data resides. So instead of having to warehouse that internally, it's actually stored outside so it doesn't have to be managed internally. Uh, and when you need something, it points to that large object and brings it back. So there's the three items. There's the large objects that you have to bring back. Uh, two, uh, with the, well, originally when Oracle began, when I was doing this way back when with Oracle 7 and Oracle 8, uh, it was intranet. There was no internet. Everything was internal to the operation. When everything was internal to the operation, the idea of internet connectivity was not really part of the structure of Oracle. Uh, also, emails really didn't exist as pervasive then as they are today. So there is some technology issues that have come into play where now Oracle is the database, but you have to connect to the database, which now evolves with the issue of there is a structure that allows you to have email connectivity so you can actually email a file, an Oracle file out. Uh, you can also receive information via email. Uh, with the advent of third-party browser products, now you have the HTTP process so you can have external third-party products connect to Oracle uh, through the HTTP process, the, the browsers, the other stuff you have to deal with. And then the third item is that uh, uh, when we were talking about triggers, we were talking about this activity uh, that happened uh, where an event occurs. Well, uh, sometimes as you're doing things, uh, and, and let's go back to that example that I cited at the very beginning where you have the IRS year and you have the business year, October, November, I mean October to September. So what happens, it's, it's, it's the end of the year, September 30th, and you have to create the new structure for the upcoming year. Uh, there are some events that you can use with Oracle that allow you to effectively pause, take action, and then come back. And that is where you have dynamic SQL and native SQL. These are the elements that work within the PL SQL structure, but also allow you to stop and create a structure. Well, let's go back. Uh, so you have a new employee that you hired, and you have to develop a retirement program for, for him. But there is no table, there is no process to hold that information for him. Because he, you know, it's going to be the new year. Last year he, had, he hadn't opted for this retirement program. Now that the new business year is going to happen, he wants to take advantage of a new retirement program. But that structure didn't exist for this employee. So at this, at this junction in time, you have to pause, create the structure that's going to hold the data, and then populate the data. So there is what they call execute immediate. That's that tool that is available to you to be able to overcome these scenarios where you're going along fine and then all of a sudden you have a scenario that you hadn't really talked about uh, such as, as this employee changing options and there is no repository, there is no structure to capture the results of the data that you're doing and you have to create that structure. Excuse me. So there is a process called Execute Media that is available to you in this SQL process that allows you to pause, create the process, and then be able to populate that process. So Chapter 10 talks to the idea of storing large files outside the system so you don't have to manage that large database item. And those usually are about 3, key, three gig or bigger. Item. So, you know, if you have a bunch of movies or songs that are very, very big, instead of having to manage them internally, you can just create a file and point to them every time you need them. 
the uh, the communications process that's now available to Oracle with the uh, advancement in e email structures, so you can email information and receive information. Uh, you know the POP process and some of the, S the STOP process, the email structures they're available to use. Uh, the HTTP scenario that allows you to uh, connect uh, via the internet scenario. Uh, also, there is this process of alerts where uh, you can actually uh, have a mechanism. So if condition exists, you have a little uh, alarm go off or message go off or something that you're having issues with. Uh, and those are some of the three main items. There are other options available to you, uh, but I will tell you that all Oracle are basically site specific in that uh, when, when you decide to purchase Oracle, and this kind of gets a little bit since we're ending this chapter and kind of, you know, setting the, the, the premise for maybe other classes you want to take in the DBA world. Uh, when I was doing this way back in the before time, and I was going to uh, install Oracle, I had a three ring binder and it had a bunch of sheets in there. And what it would do is, it, there was something ridicu ridiculously called Oracle Calculus. And what you would do is, it had a big ledger format that you would fill out. It would ask you how many users, how much file. And after you went through this whole process, it would tell you, if this is your problem that you want to solve and you want to use Oracle to solve that problem, these are the Oracle options that you should acquire to solve your problem. And that's how you would develop this Oracle scenario. Uh, and it gets really picky in there. I know when I did this the first time, at the very last, Oracle asked me, what is the serial number of your BIOS chip? Okay. How do I get the serial number of the BIOS chip? Well, the only way I could do that was turn the thing off, open up the box, and look at the and look at the at the chips and see what the numbers were on the chipset. And it destroyed <laughs> almost two weeks of process to install. I mean, since then Oracle it has become more automated. But uh, I want to give you, I want to leave you with the idea that that Oracle uh, is is very complex, very intricate, very challenging, which is why I like it. Uh, and with the advent of technology, uh, the seed I want to plant here is that never get too comfortable with what you have because it's always changing. Uh, as of late, we've had the scenario from 32-bit to 64-bit, and the fact that as technology advances, you have to update and upgrade. And when you update and upgrade, I will tell you that sometimes some of the older code becomes obsolete. So understand that you may find yourself in a scenario where it was working then, it's not working now, and you have to go back and figure out why, and it could be that, once again, that was built for the technology of the day, and as technology advances, you may be called to arms to try to fix a problem that was working and now is not. So once again, thank you for this class, and good luck.